Hello everyone to a new episode of Raven Creek Park. My name is Patcha and we are back here in my main zoo, my main project of Planet Zoo. And I should also say, yeah, not only are we back in Planet, uh, Planet Zoo, but also happy anniversary, happy fourth anniversary for Planet Zoo. It's been four years, om almost, yeah, it's over four years since Planet Zoo released on the 4th of November in 2019, I think it was. So it is four years now then. <laughs> what was four years last week? Yeah, we have we celebrated the 4th anniversary last week with a lot of cool stuff uh, coming for free to the game with a small update coming for free and with a totally new animal coming for all of you guys for free if you own the base game and uh, which is of course as you probably have seen if you are following Planet Zoo on social media or just have been in the Planet Zoo community is of course the collard Pecari or the collard Javelina as it's also called and you already could probably have guessed from the thumbnail that we are building for the collard Pecari but not only for the collard Pecari or Picari for short, but also for the Capuchin white-faced monkey, which came to us with the South America pack, which was, I think, the second ever DLC that we got for this game. The second or the third. I don't know if the Australia pack was first or the South America pack. But anyway, we are building for these two guys here in Raven Creek in our South American area, which is, of course, inspired by the South American area in Zoo Leipzig, as you probably already know, because you're watching, of course, all of my videos. <laughs> but yeah, we are celebrating four years of Planet Zoo, four years of awesome DLC, of awesome updates, of amazing community managers, com uh, community streams, and also an amazing community in general. And yeah, it, it is so crazy to think about that it is already, already four years and since this game came out. And still, I enjoy this game as it was on day one. If not even more with all the new stuff and all the updates and changes that we got over the years. And yeah, um, we don't know how, if it's will, if we ha will have a 50 year anniversary. Um, all of this is a little bit in the stars, as, as we say in Germany, um, the whole thing. But we will see what next year brings us. We, of course, will still have one DLC this year left. Um, but everything regarding next year is a bit um, ominous and we, we still don't know exactly what we can expect. But yeah, we are here to talk about um, what might not happen. We are about to talk what is happening in this episode. Of course, we are building the last big habitat or small habitat, I should say, um, in the South American area. And because it is a small habitat, that was is also the reason why there was no uh, intro cinematic as usual because it would have just been yeah, five seconds long or something like that because there isn't a big whole area to go around or to show. It's mainly two viewing points that we have here. This one which we are building right now and which will um, the focal po point of most of the episode and then of course the actual habitat itself where we have the Picaris. Um This here as it is inspired by um, Re Zoo Leipzig, I was about to say Raven Creek, but of course by Zoo Leipzig, um, they also have an habitat for uh, colored Picaris and for white-nosed Coatis. We still don't sadly have the Coati in the in Plant Zoo, uh, so I decided to go with the Capuchin Monkey, also an arboreal species, a very playful species as Coatis also are. And they have this little hut that we are building over here, this little, yeah, um, I think Zoo Leipzig calls it a shop, a uh, um, South American shop or a yeah, grocery store basically, um, which you also later see. We will de make some decorations for that so it looks like there will be stuff sold or something, someone is living there. And that is basically the winter quarter and the yeah, bad weather, weather quarter for the Coatis um, in the zoo, which is connected to their backstage area, which they go f to, through first before entering the outside area. So that is what we are doing here also because we are of course in a, in a country or in a yeah, region of a country where it can get quite cold in the winter. We need to make sure that our yeah, little capuchin friends have 
a warm place to stay during the colder times and this is an option to give them that space but also to prevent or not to prevent to give to give the um, yeah, guests an opportunity to see them the whole area as is the backstage area is of is fully uh, climbable and walkable and reachable for the monkeys i tested it out it's, it's, i was surprised myself to see that everything worked again uh, that everything worked uh, not again but in general that it worked and yeah we are now building the little furniture parts for this area we're building a little shelf here and also not a shelf we're building a little drawer or a cabinet here and then also some shelves of course to put some of the groceries on that we want to sell in this little shop um which is yeah basically just a playground for the monkeys which i think is, is some nice theming not too much theming not too on the nose theming um we but we can capture yeah basically the spirit a bit of the of south, south american areas of the of the people that live in that area that live with these animals in that area and yeah, how they maybe interact in their daily life in the little villages or something like that without being uh, having any cliches or something like that. Um, and I think in the end it turned out really well, as I would say, as you saw in the intro cinematic, but no, as you will see in the final um, showcase at the end of this video, as always, um, yeah, we'll see everything live and in color, as, <laughs> as someone would say. Um, then we will take a in-depth look at everything that is in this yeah, picture basically. I even added a picture of uh, Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, um, as this is a common sight in South American homes or South American areas because it's a very Christian country and also yeah, because <laughs> the, the Leipzig area had it as well. Uh, believe me or not, they also have a picture of Mother Mary in their yeah, Kuati backstage, Kuati indoor area for so to say now we are just cupping some stuff some yeah cups and uh, shelf things <laughs> i don't know what what to call them and um, to decorate a little bit more of course in if this would be a real enclosure everything would be screwed down to the ground or to the yeah, shelves or stuff like that so that the monkeys cannot rip it apart cannot take it can maybe hurt themselves not monkeys the Kuatis, of course but also the monkeys uh, cannot hurt themselves with it but yeah let's talk a bit a bit more about the peccari uh, peccari so to say the javelina this highlight of this video and i can't be more happy that we got them uh, it is is, is if frontier listened or yeah heard me to my plans that i have for the zoo and said okay yeah we give this man a peccari after so many years because i was uh, yeah i was planning to make this enclosure um, last week uh, when I was finishing the tour video and back then we only had the, um, co the cappuccino monkey and I was a bit sad uh, because this area this exhibit is designed for also ground dwelling animals um, that live on the ground and not only in the trees so it was a bit weird if you just have the small monkeys in there and nothing on the ground the whole ground is basically dead so to say um, and I didn't know what to put in there. I was thinking maybe capybara, maybe a second enclosure of capybaras. Maybe I put some more turtles in there, stuff like that. Um, and then your yeah, frontier basically listened to me and, and yeah, said, okay, we give this man the, the, the peccari that he needs for this area. And yeah, um, now we have them and they look fantastic. While we are building, of course, this little uh, table over here. Uh, which is also something in the real life version and which the monkeys can actually walk on but yeah the peccari look fantastic they sound fantastic they have a lot of little details with the fur i think it is one of most of frontier's most detailed fur works um, most realistic fur works that i ever did with an animal apart from maybe some of the animals from the uh, area pack and what was the last pack the uh, Oceana pack of course, but this, these animals in there mostly didn't have fur. I mean, yeah, the Tasmanian Devil had, but you know what I mean. Yeah, the, the Picari looks amazing. You can really see the difference between um, may, between different colorations. There are some darker ones, some lighter ones, stuff like that. The babies are really adorable <laughs> and really cute. And yeah, um, also I think a small fun fact because I saw it pop up quite a lot. Um, during yeah, the last days, the peccaris are not pigs in a traditional sense. Um, of course, they belong to the wider Suina family, which also includes pigs. But peccaris are their 
own little family um, called the Taya Suida, um, or basically New World Picts, which only includes all three of the Picari um, species, the white lip Picari, the Sha Shakuan Picari, and the Collard Picari, and some of the yeah, some extinct members, of course, but yeah, they are not pigs, they are different enough from pigs. Uh, for one example, would see be the more straight tusks that they have, um, so that they are their own little group, basically. But of course, it is not they are wrong to say pigs to them, and their name Picari even means in I think Spanish, I think it is, or Portuguese, even means something like wild boar, stuff like that. So um, they are very close resembling them, but it is cool to have these, yeah, these different animals in the game now. So many options basically, and so many taxonomy options uh, with even animals that are uh, really not your typical animal. Basically, I mean, picaris are quite um, popular in zoos. Uh, I heard also in U.S. American zoos they are quite a common animal. Um, also, I only saw them, I think, in two zoos in Germany, which was Leipzig Zoo, as of obvious, <laughs> and also um, Berlin uh, Berlin Zoo, the big zoo, the biggest zoo in Germany, um, which also had, I think it was the Chacuan Pecari, which is a little bit of a, the bigger uh, variant of the bigger species. So it's really cool um, to have them. And yeah, as I said, you, every one of, of you can have them. They are free for everyone to play around with, to build for, which is really amazing. We got the black and white rough lemur in the first year or the second year. No, in the first year we just, we didn't got any free animal. Uh, we, but in the second year we got the black and white rough lemur, uh, which was okay, but I'm not a big fan of the lemurs and we already had two lemurs. So um, I w it was fine. I think I never really built for them since we got them. And then last year, as you probably know, because there's also a video about it on my channel, we got the red deer, um, also an amazing animal. I'm just, yeah, as, as you probably can guess, I'm a sucker for North American, European animals, for forest animals, and yeah, it was for animals from the Northern Hemisphere in general. Um, as pro people who are longer on my channel probably can already uh, know, probably already know that I'm not the biggest fan of African animals, uh, because I don't know, it is something, uh, yeah, I know, can't really say why, but uh, anyways, <laughs> it doesn't matter here. Um, so it was really cool that we now got a North American animal, and what is even more better, because it is a base game animal, and. Planet Zoo, when it released, uh, while we are finishing up, by the way, is a little hut here with some, of course, help for the monkeys to get out and to get to the other side. Yeah, when Planet Zoo released, we only had basically one South American animal, um, because I don't count the Galapagos giant tortoise, because they are not from South America, they are from the islands of Galapagos. But yeah, we only had the Baird's tapir as the only South American animal, and in the North American uh, region, we only had the grizzly bear, the bison, the um, pronghorn, and yeah, if you want to count the wolf, the timber wolf, but also the timber wolves are found everywhere in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so it was not a much, I mean, we didn't have any animal from Europe apart from the timber wolf, but yeah, it still was quite yeah, a lacking region of the world, which still, I mean, even South America is one of the most biodiverse regions on this planet and it's still massively lacking animals, but what Plant Zoo, I think, rather um, clever, cleverly did here with the Pecari, adding the Pecari, is giving uh, base game players that don't have any DLC, and yes, there are some people that still don't have any DLC, um, they gave, gives them an animal that is both from South America and from North America, because the Collar Pecari is found from the deserts of Arizona, down to the yeah, jungles of South America um, in the Amazonas, Amazon, Amazonian region. Um, and they, they, gave, they give them an animal that is from both regions that can be used in North American settings and in, in South American zoos. And yeah, with one animal, uh, the Planet Zoo's base game just got a South American animal more and a North American animal more. And that is really in clever and interesting. Same thing they did last year with the Red Deer where they gave us an European animal. So they are slowly yeah, filling out the gaps in the base game that were uh, massively lacking um, over the last years. 
they slowly, very very slowly because one element per year, but they are doing, they're trying their best to yeah, fill these gaps a little bit more, so that even if you don't have any DLCs, you are still have some options to play around with, and I think that is a really genius move, and I don't know if it is the reasoning and the thought behind it, because the Picari I think was also quite high on the meta wishlist, um, also in general, they are wishlist of the community, but still, if it, even if it is not the reason, it is something that is really cool to think about. And yeah, we are now building, while I'm still while I'm trying to stop uh, your fan girling over the Picari, we are now building a little bit of a climbing frame for the Capuchin Monkeys over here, which is all usable by them, it's all climbable by them. They glitch out a little bit here and there, but um, this is climbing a plant zoo, it is still not perfect. And it also probably will never be perfect, but yeah, it works and this is more than enough for me and it doesn't look that bad <laughs> when they do it. But yeah, another reason um, I still, I love the Pekari is, um, <laughs> yeah, starting again, <laughs> funny with, but yeah, I want to say that I saw a lot of, of builds um, for the Pekari in the last days, which had this yeah, typical desert, Arizona, New Mexico flavor to it. Uh, very dry and such thing, and I wanted to give more of a yeah, more tropical, more grass, uh, more, more grass ninja, but more foresty vibe to the Picari, because this is also an yeah, biome you can find them in the thick forest, in the high grasses, and yeah, wet areas of South America. And I think this for you guys, if you want some inspiration, you have now some options to choose from, either if you want to have some dry. Yeah, more drier grasslandish areas for Picari. You can of course, for example, look up Caesar Creates amazing video that he posted on Sunday, Saturday. He posts on Saturday, not Sunday. He posts on Sunday. <laughs> he always posts on Sunday. Um, and if you want some more of a yeah, more maybe tropical or more foresty feel, you can yeah, take some inspiration from Mevex, for example, also for some um, multi-species habitat for the Picari because they can share. They have it had with quite a lot of animals, or they get a lot of enrichment from quite a lot of animals. I think the American bison's in there, uh, the llama, the anteater, the tapir, um, the capuchin monkey is in there. So quite a lot of animals they can share habitat with or they get enriched by, which is really cool. So yeah, um, you have a little bit of inspiration hopefully with this video. And I will now leave you to the rest of the speed build with some nice music from the wonderful creators of Planet Zoo and then I see you in the end of the video in yeah the real time part. So until then have a great time. All right, let's get to it. We are here in the real time part, standing in front of our anteater and main wolf enclosure and 
to the left of us now is a little tiny hut that you saw created <laughs> in the speed build. And yeah, there they are, the monkeys, as I said. It is fully functional and this is how the final product looks now. <laughs> I don't know that they can sleep on the, on the desk. I saw them sleeping down here, but on the desk. But yeah, um, this is a tiny little shop, grocery store inspired by some South American architecture, some more village, rural places over there and yeah we have of course a glass window here and a cage for the keeper to get in to safely get in while some animals are in there and to also yeah, prevent animals from escaping through the store and yeah um as i said oh there's another one and yeah they uh they do that <laughs> i don't know how this um how why this happens but they float a little bit what is this as i said the climbing behavior in Plant Zoo. And yeah, over there is a little picture of Mother Mary behind the um yeah, the door or the window shutter if you want to if you want to close <laughs> if we want to close um this this um door for the animals during the winter or when we have to do some stuff in the enclosure, we can of course close that so they can't get through here. And yeah, the, Okay, we try to follow this little monkey over here. Uh, maybe if he is going, seems like, or did, no? Or where is he? I thought he was there. <laughs> where did he go? Or is he already through? I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> they can go through here and into their backstage area, which you can have a, sn a quick sneak peek into. Um, I don't know where the monkey went. Um, I have to check that, but yeah, this is the backstage area. Uh, back here with also the Picari backstage over here, which leads to there, um, behind the scenes yard, basically, um, where we keep can keep them if they have to do renovations or something. Can I get up there again, is, is the question, or do I have to get out? I think I have to get out, but yeah. Um, this is the backstage area, basically, where we can get transport the monkeys from the backstage to the little hut. And I don't know where this third monkey went. Um, I hope he's not on the roof. <laughs> but yeah, this is little hut over here. And then we come to the enclosure over here with the Picaris. There's some baby Picaris over there. And of course the adolescent ones. Some are sleeping. Some yeah can enjoy the mud bath over here or can get a little drink. And what I didn't show in the video was that I placed some hot wire, some hot grass over here and over there on this barrier so that the monkeys can't get too close to it or and uh, could maybe climb out or try to escape or something like that. So this is something I didn't set in the speed build but it's something you definitely should consider while building a monkey enclosure. This open, um, you should also always make sure that the monkeys can't get out at any way. But yeah, I really like how it turned out. It's a bit more yeah, shadowy, it's a bit more um, more foresty, more f in line with the rest of the zoo and has his own character like all of these four enclosures now have. This is more of a yeah, wetlandish, this is more grasslandish, and they have this more mountainous region over there. And then you have this more forest area over here, um, which is I really like and which you can also see if you have a quick tour. Uh, one moment, hello. To this area over there, to this viewing area by the capybaras enjoying a bath. Um, yeah, you can also see from over here. So if you're standing over here, if you're coming away from this direction, you see this little hut over here, you see the animals over there, and you want to know, okay, what is there, what what, what animals are there. Uh, you see some pigs, but you don't know really what it is. And then you can, yeah, explore the rest of the trail and find out which animals are hiding over there, which I think is really cool that you have this cross view, this panorama view to the other enclosure over here, um, which is separated, by the way, by this, which is I, what I called um, fake reed or electric reed. Uh, it's basically a water barrier for the capybaras and, of course, the pecaris, so they can't swim to the other side. But, yeah, I really like it. And you can maybe click on a pecari and see some details. Yeah. And, yeah, I really love what Frontier did here with the models. It is. It looks amazing. <laughs> you can also hear one in the background there, we see a baby over there. It really, they did an amazing job. Also, this tiny hairs under yeah, under the snout, which is very typical for uh, Picaris. And then this white stripe, which gave them the name Colored Picari. 
because it looks like a color as you can probably guess if you can also look at the baby they are just adorable <laughs> i mean it hardly gets any cuter than that i mean they are just yeah, the cutest <laughs> and they are a loud folk uh, i have to say that and they really need that that much room um i think i have now six or seven in here and they are totally fine with their space they you can have up to 15 of them in an enclosure and yeah they really need that much of space which is really amazing but yeah i really really enjoy oh there's a there are four of them now I hope not, don't know if they are stuck or not. Uh, I have to check after every the recording. Um, of course, also some tree protection over here, so the monkeys can't climb over there. It would probably something like metal or something like that, something yeah sleek and not very straight, so they can't get a grip of anything and climb out or climb o o higher than we want them to climb. And I also placed one of the on the yeah enrichment tree over there, which I think uh, is really sets up the mood and yeah gives it a, uh, gives it a complete picture basically. There's a monkey, so they can get out, or are the other one still on the table? I will check that. <laughs> but yeah, I hope um, yeah. Let me know how you enjoy this build, how you like this build. Um, I'm always happy for feedback. What I could change, what I could maybe be make better. I'm no one is an expert here. So there are always things that we can improve on. So let me know if there's anything I could do. And yeah, otherwise I hope you enjoyed this episode. You enjoyed this video for the fourth anniversary animal, the Picari. And then I hope you have an awesome rest of the week. You stay safe and that I see you in the next video. And yeah, if you like, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already or consider giving the video a like it always helps me to see um, uh, what people enjoy what they don't enjoy and uh, what i can do better but yeah thank you everyone for listening for watching this video and then i see you in the next video until then bye bye